Thud record, will you please state your full name and the capacity in which you appear today? My name's Katie Kulas. I'm the CEO of Yellow Ladybugs. I now invite you to make a short opening statement and at the conclusion of your remarks, I'll invite members of the committee to ask questions. Sure. Um, if it's OK, I'd like to read my statement in full and then open to take questions. Sure. Okay, so I'm the founder and CEO of Yellow Ladybugs. We are an autistic-led non-government charity with a strong mission to create opportunities for connection, learning and promotion of autistic pride within our community. I'm autistic myself um, and I've got two autistic daughters. We also have a strong advocacy mission to address the many challenges, barriers and disadvantages we face, which is why today is so important for us. Our autistic girls and gender diverse young people, our ladybugs as we like to call them, are often over the overlooked minority within the minority within the minority. We are the lost girls, the ones who slip through the net. And we've been overlooked for many reasons, including prevailing stereotypes of what autism looks like, the gender bias of standard diagnostic tools, and the way girls are socialised and viewed in our society more generally. We know that many autistic girls are being missed or have, or have their needs invalidated because of our internalised or hidden presentation. In fact, 80% of women remain undiagnosed by the age of 18. What's the relevance of this, um, considering we're talking about school can't today? Well, the impact of this oversight extends well beyond access to diagnosis and exposes the layered vulnerabilities our community experience, including limited access to communities and their autistic peers. But importantly, it exposes the vulnerabilities in accessing learning in a way that suits our neurotype. This can begin to paint a picture of why many of our ladybugs just can't do school as it currently stands. The mental health, suicidal ideation, self-harm stats are terrible for autistic girls and women, which I don't want to delve into today, but I do want that noted. Suffice to say, it is say, sorry, suffice to say that there are specific vulnerabilities of autistic girls and gender diverse youth, and it's an important part of the school can't conversation. And we are honoured to be here to represent our community, and my discussion will talk through this today. So in terms of our submission, we provided some insights from, from members we interviewed. It wasn't a full extensive interview. We don't have capacity or funding to do it, and we would like to extend this further. But in an informal interview process, we found that 93% of young people in our community had experienced school can in the past. And 66% of respondents said they had experienced school can well before COVID. So what needs to change? So it's not, just our, it's not our children who need to change, it's the system. It's not parents failing, it's the system. It's the system, it's the system, it's the system. So how do we begin changing the system? Well, for us as an autistic-led organisation, and these may be new terms for you and happy to expand in the questions, we need to build an understanding of and an appreciation of neurodiversity and put that right into the curriculum. It needs to start early. We need to teach our preppies that all brains are valuable and there is more than one way to learn. Let's teach this when they're young, when they are learning about other diversities in the world. Our community are knocking on the system's door and we're being turned down. For example, autistic psychologist Sandia Menon literally wrote the perfect book for inclusion in the prep book bag, but it was rejected. It was all about understanding brains and introducing the concept of neurodiversity. Why was it not included this year as part of the prep bag? Perfect opportunity. Next, let's understand what neuroaffirming is, looks like and feels like, and build that into the school system. Neuroaffirming to us means you have considered, acknowledged and validated our, or our autistic identity and culture. It is being mindful of the language you use and appreciating that we want to be the very best versions of ourselves, not neurotypical passing. That is a second rate version of a neurotypical person. It is trying not to change us and make us fit into a version of something that is more socially acceptable to the majority. 
It is about honouring our differences and not considering them as deficits that need to be fixed. It is not teaching us to suppress who we are, masking our natural selves so that we can fit in. Neuroaffirming teaching, don't even know if that's a word yet, but let's make it one, should be all of this and more. Let's, next I'm going to say let's tear down the standard punitive reward-based systems our schools adopt for anything they think is related to behaviour and start introducing trauma-informed, empathic, curious, connection-based strategies instead, e.g. Ross Green's collaborative and proactive solutions model, as an example. Instead of behaviour plans, let's create connection plans. Let's stop calling for tough love as a fix. We need to understand the science behind it. Neuroception is how our brain decides the, if the world is safe, if our brain safety mechanism that triggers our primal fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. It's subconscious. It doesn't involve a conscious choice. And I know others will talk about this today, so I'm not going to delve into it too much. But when our children tell us they can't go to school, it is because their nervous system is telling them they are not safe. Taking a hardline authoritarian approach intensifies the mental, emotional and behavioural dysregulation and distress that leads to more school refusal. In short, tough love doesn't work. It doesn't. I know firsthand. One parent shared this with us as part of our inquiry into this for you today. I was told today I had to show tough love. How do those words go together, tough and love? I still have flashbacks to the time they ripped you from my arms. She will be fine, they said, but she weren't. You were holding on so hard. I still remember the hole it left in my T-shirt, but that was when you were younger and I didn't know better. I do now. You are still clinging, not to me, but the safety of your bedroom. You haven't been to school in months. I see your heaviness. You are tired, exhausted and burnt out. That masking you did came at a cost and we are now picking up the pieces and on top of that we are getting judged for it. But I don't care what they think. You just can't go anymore. I know. I see it and I feel it too. It's hard on all of us but we will make it work. We will try and get through this and strip the stress, demand heavy ways of the past away from you and I hope to see you again, the real you, and see you basking in your glimmers and see your heart and soul feeling healing for the first time in a long time. That was from one of our members. Okay, so what else can we do to fix the system? Well, we need a more flexible approach to learning and more investment in alternative options. There have been many incredible witnesses talking about these options over this hearing, so I'm not going to go into this again today, but there needs to be investment from the government to foster alternative options, homeschooling, virtual schooling, community community schools, et cetera, et cetera. The next point I want to make is that we need to understand that it's not a choice. I briefly mentioned this before, that as you'll be hearing a lot today, it's can't, not won't. If they could go to school, they would. If parents could get to them to school, they would. So all this can't is a smoke signal that something more is going on. We need schools and parents to lead with curiosity and empathy. What's the unmet need for our ladybugs and our students? These are hidden for autistic girls and gender diverse students. So we have to dig deeper to uncover what's going on under the surface. For our ladybugs, it might be burnout from masking our authentic selves, trying to learn in a system where we are in the neuro minority trying to learn in an environment that is distressing our senses and our soul. So we need the system to be asking why might they not be feeling safe at school? Is there covert bullying going on? Is there a lack of connection with their peers or teacher? Is the environment overwhelming? Are they tired from having to be someone they are not just to fit in? If a child was refusing to go home, we would wonder why. But when a child can't go to school, we don't do the same. We need to look upstream to work out what's going on. I've got specific recommendations which I'll go through in a minute, but any solution needs to be ongoing and input with co-design from people with lived experience, 
Investment in organisations with lived experience, like Yellow Ladybugs and some others you may hear from, we need to shape our education system together. What COVID did was bring a taste of what life could look like for those of us who were struggling. It suited many of our ladybugs not having to go into a system anymore. By the very science of neuroception, who felt unsafe at school, it showed them that many now can't let go and they, and they want to hold on to that feeling of safety that they have, and maybe this is why we are seeing an increased number after COVID. But let me be clear, this existed well before COVID. As documented by our community and our stories and the de decades and decades of silent voices, we are glad that now it's getting the exposure it deserves. But let's not pretend that this is because of COVID, and I'm not suggesting anyone is, but I do want to make that point. Let's look at how the system was able to somewhat flex during this time. It took a global pandemic to show what can be achieved if it has to be done. So let's use this as a springboard and begin to relook what education means for our, for our autistic girls and gender diverse students and find a way that we can be our authentic true selves so we don't need to feel the trauma that comes every day. Let's find a way to celebrate autistic identity and culture at school. Lastly, it astounds me how siloed we are as a community tackling this system. Where is the Minister of Mental Health for this, or the ministers? Where are the Minister for NDIS? Why aren't we all on the set page working to this? Let's stop passing the buck between state and federal and between departments and departments and realise we have to work on this together because literally we have the lives of our young people in our hands. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wong-Pan.